get started now. So my name is Vita Tamasebi. I'm a Knowledge Management and Evaluation Specialist at Encompass, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to 10 Minutes to Task, a short educational webinar brought to you by the Encompass Task 4 ICT Partnership. Today, you'll hear a 10-minute presentation on an educational topic. Please submit your questions throughout the presentation in the chat space in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. At the end of the presentation, our speakers will answer as many questions as time permits. Encompass leads a partnership of 10 organizations with proven expertise in international health, bringing to you innovative approaches and cost-effective ICT solutions. We believe that successful development solutions must be country-led, adaptable to the local context, linked to quality health systems, and inclusive of all stakeholders. Today, our presentation is being brought to you by two partners, BA Enterprises and URC. Our speakers will share the story of how tablets are being used to strengthen supervisory systems and improve health service delivery in USA's Primary Healthcare Project in Iraq and TB Care 2 program. Our presenters are Taylor Price from URC and Ramona Arnett from BEA. Thank you both for being with us today, and over to you. Thank you very much, Vita. Uh, we're very excited about this presentation and thrilled about the turnout. We're going to be looking at the use of tablets in the health field. And this, of course, has been thought of as tomorrow's technology, but it's here today. The webinar will be structured as follows. We will uh, describe some use cases for the tablets. We will then uh, show you how they work in the field. At this moment, BEA and URC currently have tablets with custom-built applications deployed in seven countries. The basic advantages and disadvantages of this technology will be looked at. And then we'll look at what's happening under the hood. In other words, we will outline the workflow. Then we will go ahead and have you imagine, because the use of this tablet is limited by your imagination. So Taylor is now going to talk to you about one of our use cases. Thanks, Ramona. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. I am going to talk to you about the use of tablets for child vaccination in Iraq um, through the USAID Primary Health Care Project. Um, we work to strengthen primary health care across the whole country with a specific focus on maternal and child health. And we have worked to implement tablets uh, with vaccination teams, which consist of a supervisor and then several vaccinators. Um, these teams are mobile and they go out into the different communities during vaccination campaigns um, and provide vaccinations, whether for polio or measles or different vaccine preventable diseases. Um, and this tablet allows for them to do geotracking, um, mark vaccinations that they were actually able to provide the child, um, mark vaccinations that the child still needs to receive um, if someone needs to return to perform additional vaccinations or if a child could not initially receive a vaccination. They are also able to record any vaccination side effects. Um, this has drastically helped to improve and streamline the process for actual real-time information. It's far more accurate. Um, and if vaccinators don't currently have access to the internet, they are able to store this information directly on the tablet, and they are able to upload this once a connection is available. Additionally, there has been great displacement recently in Iraq, and the geotracking system has helped the Ministry of Health to be able to locate and identify the locations of displaced families throughout the country. Um, previously, they had used paper-based, which was cumbersome, not accurate, and very time-consuming. So this has just completely streamlined everything and given them a real-time actual picture of what's happening on the ground for improved coverage and a better response. 
we have received great feedback from both the vaccinators, the supervisors, and officials that we've worked with at the Ministry of Health. Um, thank you. And I will now pass it back over to Ramona. Thank you, Taylor. The, the whole issue of internally displaced persons that Taylor was just speaking about occurs in so many countries, and these tablets are a great tool for helping ministries of health track individuals and get them the medical care and vaccinations that are necessary. Another example is um, the use of the tablets to supervise field workers in Bangladesh. We have developed a variety of checklists for the evaluation of health clinics and their procedures. This assesses the status of the facility itself and its conditions, the equipment within the facility, the staffing levels, and the training needs for the personnel. A further example is we've developed a multi-country health survey for the countries of southern Africa where we are gathering baseline data from which the various ministries of health will develop a multi-pronged action plan relating to various forms of lung disease. We have developed tablet applications for monitoring DOTS workers. You can see where the DOTS worker has been and how long they have been there. So there's time stamping and geocoding. You can have the DOTS worker document the patient medication intake and stay long enough and know that they have to observe any adverse reactions for the medication. The TBQ, some of the TBQC uh, clinic studies have documented the quantity and types of services provided by those clinics and the outcomes of the treatment on a um, patient-by-patient -patient basis or on a clinic-wide basis. This is a screenshot, which is an example taken from one of our instruments that is a survey instrument being used in um, Bangladesh. There are, of course, advantages. These tablets are small, light, portable, and robust. They have long battery life, and they'll work a full day without charge. While there are many sizes available, we are using 7-inch and 10-inch tablets because they are easy to handle and easy to carry around. They're also uh, less uh, desirable to steal. They are relatively low cost, and they're very popular with the health workers. It brings them status. They are certainly easier to carry around and keep track of than a stack of files and papers. You have time stamping and geocoding, which reduces error. Some more advantages. We, uh, once there is a set of data to be gathered that has been defined, we can rapidly implement one of these projects. It takes three weeks to uh, program a field use case. The uh, tablets and, uh, of course, phones by implication are, but tablets are better for this, are used as collection devices for data and information, uh, job aids, and training devices. They have checklists and mini courses, all kinds of possibilities. They reduce errors. The checklists for procedures and QC, for example, are very easy to follow on the tablet, and it reduces the rate at, at time, instance of things being skipped. They can score, store data and information as well as transmit data and information. The stored data and tools can easily be referred to in the field, and the transmitted data, if you are in an area where you've got connectivity, permits real-time monitoring of the field worker. We use the cameras that are in, in indigenous to the tablets for documenting conditions, such as photograph of equipment or photograph of holes in bed nets. Um, and the tablets take audio notes if that is better for the field worker. There are, of course, disadvantages. There is a limit to what can be displayed on these small screen sizes at any time. 
There is, of course, the capital cost involved in buying the tablets, which we recommend being bought in country. There's the potential of theft, which is, of course, a worldwide problem. While there is no uniformity of programming yet, uh, Android, Apple, etc., we find that Android is the most available worldwide, and so we use that, and the Android equipment is the lowest cost. So what is really happening? What is the workflow? A field worker can download from the web one or many instruments for their job. So if they're going out in the field and they need to, to uh, have three different instruments for the job they've been assigned for the next few days, they download all three instruments, as many as they're assigned. They then go out in the field and they gather data, they input the data, um, they use the same instrument repeatedly, but each instance of the data is saved as an independent data file so that people's, the different records don't get mixed together. Once a file is marked finished, the data is locked. It's not changeable, thereby making the data more reliable. If the field worker needs to take a break in the middle of entering uh, data in a particular instance, they can save what they've done and come back, say, after lunch and complete it later. The data is uploaded to the central server when there's a web connection or can be transferred to a thumb drive, which is then uploaded to the central server. When it's uploaded, it is not eliminated from the tablet. It is also re resident there until it is deleted in case the field worker needs to refer back to it. The data that's been sent to the server is then downloaded by your um, M&E person who analyzes it in whatever, with whatever tools they desire to use, whatever is most comfortable for them. And then an action plan is created, such as developing a protocol, um, changing the way a set of patient orders are, reallocation of personnel, assessment of supply and medication needs, whatever the particular instrument addresses. To use the tablets, we can use existing forms and questionnaires and research instruments, or we can create new ones. The Questions can be in multiple forms. They can be binary, such as yes, no. They can be multiple choice, or they can be multiple choices, or they can be multiple column. Uh, it can take text input. It can take numerical data. It can take photographs and sound. We, as I said, recommend tablets be purchased locally. We uh, set up a... Um, a specific website to gather the data for the particular application. And we train the uh, project people. It takes about an hour and a half. Um, and we do it real time via Skype so that they know how to administer the um, tablets in for their particular project. And then the project starts. When we train the project people, we are building capacity. And that means that we also train them in how to adapt for uh, the checklists and the questionnaires uh, as their needs go on so that it doesn't have to come back to us for programming over and over again. So authorized managers are able to create checklists which enable immediate enhancement to the data that they are having collected. And that is our overview. This is the beginning of a very exciting time in terms of the application of technology to help solve various health issues around the world. Are there any questions? Thank you so much, Taylor and Ramona. Yes, we have received several good questions. Uh, I know we only have a few minutes left, and Taylor and Ramona have been kind enough to offer to follow up with a blog of some sort to address any questions that we don't get to today. Um, but just to go back and, and see how many we can get through, one of our participants asked um, how exactly geocoding reduces errors. 
Oh, because uh, one of the things that we know is that sometimes field workers state that they have been in locations that they have not been in and that and uh, have provided services that therefore have not been provided. So from a supervisory point of view, this shows the supervisor that they actually went to said location and therefore uh, the data is more reliable. Okay, great. Another question was um, <clears throat> whether or not you've experienced any issues with connectivity as forms are being um, downloaded. Uh, connectivity is, is always a potential issue. What we recommend uh, if you've got workers who are going to, you know, is that they go where there is connectivity, they download the forms that they need for the length of time that they're going to be in an area where there is no connectivity, and then go out into the field and they can use the same forms over and over again. Uh, the, the tablets will hold an immense amount of data before they need to be uh, uploaded. Days and days and days worth of stuff. Um, but yeah, assuming if it's set up properly, that is not an issue. Great. And do you have any data on the effectiveness of this approach? Well, or when this is all it? a new world. Yeah. And one of the things about new worlds is we don't have hard data yet. We have a lot of um, what of um, what appears to be data, but uh, and it looks good. Certainly, it is the case that uh, the workers who are using the tablets like them better than the paper system, uh, and we can track what's happening with the movements of the field workers. So it seems to be uh, working very well, but we don't have a hard, hard independent data at this point. I wish we did, but it hasn't been around long enough. And finally, uh, one of our participants is asking how to get in touch in case they find applicability to, to their technical area. And um, I've put up a slide here where you can find some information on um, how to get in touch with us. I'll also put my email here in the chat box. Um, but uh, actually, Matt Tata is online, and he is um, the COR who is responsible for this mechanism at USAID. So if you are a participant from there, uh, then you can also get in touch with Matt. So I think, actually, um, if we can put up our two kind of final boxes. We would love to hear from you all about both what you appreciated most about being in this session, uh, about the content of the session, delivery, anything that you appreciated. And if you have any suggestions for future webinars, uh, we are trying to do these monthly and would really love some feedback from you and, and to be able to tailor it to things that you uh, are most interested in learning about. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.